Hello and welcome. It's a new graphic novel review by me, Andrew Ace. You can find me online at UYS999. This review is going to talk about Brian K. Vaughn. He's a writer who's done work DC, Marvel, independently, and his work has breached genres. I think it's also reached non-comic book fans. Uh, one of the works is being tapped to become a TV series a la Preacher, The Walking Dead, everything else that's being made from comics into TV or movies. That book is where I'm going to start. Why the Last Man? Now this was put out by Vertigo, so putting it kind of with the more independent titles he's done maybe isn't fair, but what it is is a standalone story that he did, you know, entirely. It's complete. It's done. It's finished. And the premise is just completely wild and crazy. There's something happens, a plague, a virus, an act of God, who knows, <clears throat> and there's one man left on the planet Earth um, surrounded by women. And what happens next is part of the story, though there are flashbacks, relationships between characters, and it's just... It's a phenomenal read with no superheroes, no super anything, that at the same time is wildly fantastical given the initial premise, and the characters are intelligently written. One thing about Brian K. Vaughan, he did work with um, Joss Whedon on at least two different projects, and I think why I make that comparison and bring it up so early on is that Brian K. Vaughan is amazing at handling large costs, uh, great dialogue uh, between the characters, you know, all the things that a lot of Whedon fans would say, oh, Joss Whedon does the best, well, Brian K. Vaughan is that for comic books, and I can't speak highly enough of his work. So, first off, While the Last Man, there's nine volumes, it's by Vertigo Comics, it is a mature reader's title, as are all Vertigo, and I can't, you know, say, you know, maybe 16, but definitely 18 plus, there's sex, violence, the whole nine yards, it's very, I don't want to say gritty, because there's a very, a, a certain fantastic element to it, but it, it is a, a real life comic book versus kind of the more super stories that we get from other publishers, other creators. So, up next, Paper Girls. Now, this one is a little newer, this is volume, this first volume just came out, I believe we're at issue seven, maybe eight. It's by Image Comics, Brian K. Vaughan, uh, creator owned, obviously in this case, uh, working with Cliff Chang, one of my favorite artists. I am a big fan of his smooth, clean, simple style of pencil work. And that's not to actually say it is simple, just that to my eye, uh, I, I feel the line work gives way to the larger bit of art. Um, to contrast this, I would maybe point to something like Frank Miller's Sin City, where the line work, the edginess of the art, uh, is so apparent, but is meant to be so apparent as it's conveying much of the mood. So, Cliff Chang though, uh, Brian K. Vaughan, Paper Girls, Image Comics, the premise is a bunch of young girls in the 80s are delivering newspapers, and one night, they run across some time-traveling teenagers. I don't want to explain more than that, and certainly the plot is just unfolding, so I don't even want to guess as what I might have read or what is going to come, but Brian K. Vaughan uh, does a heartwarming, nostalgic take on the 80s, and at the same time, uh, a time epic that uh, I can't wait to see what happens next. Next. So, after that, we have a title that maybe more people are going to know about at the moment, Saga. This is another one by Image Comics. I like how I turn the spine and you can see it. Uh, Image Comics, uh, Fiona Staples is the artist. A very different style of art than Cliff Chang. She's got a looser pencil style and it certainly helps accentuate the fantastical qualities uh, of the story. So Saga is both a fantasy, magic, uh, supernatural kind of story as well as a sci-fi, space epic, clash of worlds, galactic war. And how, yeah, I almost lost my breath, I'm like, oh, that sounds so exciting. Uh, how he managed to fuse all of this together is incredibly remarkable, because certainly I remember when I heard of the first issue coming out, I thought to myself, if this wasn't Brian K. Vaughn, 
I wouldn't be reading this. It's not that I dislike these genres, it just sounds like someone's trying to take all the genres at once, and I, 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 don't, I don't know how that's going to work out. Uh, he defies expectations, he blows you away with his characters, the story, for all of its epicness, is very heartwarming, uh, centered on the birth of a young child, the potential peace between these warring people, and, and it goes from there. There's five, maybe six volumes out now. Again, this is a bit more of a mature reader uh, comic book. It's tough. I mean, you know, you know when you're dealing with Vertigo, what age range is probably going to be appropriate. Uh, when it comes to image, because it's more creator-owned, they have more license. At the same time, um, you know, I'm suddenly thinking, and that I agreed with this, but this book was banned briefly, or at least censored, as there's a panel um, depicting certain acts of sex. And this is art, but at the same time, this is art for 16, 18 plus readers. Certainly for people who can appreciate it as art, um, you know, and and appreciate the subtext that's talking about our real life issues and not get hung up um, over the more surface, you know, coding that, yes, is the comic book, that is the art, but isn't really what's being spoken about. So, like I said, though, uh, Saga, phenomenal read, but keep in mind, mature readers probably best, let's just to say 18 plus. Right, well, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to have to whip through two of the next books. And actually, why don't I start with then? Uh, we stand on guard. Canadian viewers, readers, check this out. Brian K. Vaughan does The U.S. Invasion of Canada. Uh, it's a single story in one hardcover graphic novel, though there might be a softcover out. And it was done by Image. Yeah, done by Image. This is so mature, readers. Uh, I love it. It's a phenomenal read, incredibly well written. Uh, Canadians read it, really. But at the same time, there's one scene in issue three, if I remember correctly. Um, I, I, I was a changed man having read that. So I really have to caution, this is not something to just be read lightly. Certainly not for anyone in, under 18. Heck, maybe just to be clear enough for anyone under 21. You know, depending on where you live. Uh, it, it's not that it is sexual um, or even over violence, uber violence, though there is that too. Um, it's just, man, uh, Brian K. Vaughn knows how to really write horrible moments happening to characters. And I mean, that's good because you care and, and you're empathizing and you're emotionally connecting with the story, but wow, can the man write! And that in turn makes it pretty hard and harsh when you read some of his scenes that just mess with you. So anyway, we stand on guard, phenomenal read. And lastly, before I take a break, um, I've got Ex Machina, Ex Machina, depending upon how you pronounce it. This was done by Wildstorm, uh, imprint of DC at the time, maybe? The company sort of moves back and forth. Tony Harris is the artist. He does a very uh, photogenic, um, I believe he even at times uses models for some of his, uh, setting up his scenes and his artwork. I actually, I have a page, uh, from this first graphic novel, from one of the first issues. Uh, Brian K. Vaughan's writing a story about a young engineer who encounters a device that sort of fuses with him and allows him to talk to machines. This isn't, though, a super universe, really, in a sense, because certainly when you watch the main character trying to be a superhero, uh, it's it's crazy, it's painful, and the story doesn't even start really here in this first volume till after he's given up being a superhero, and instead he um, goes on to try and run to become mayor of New York. This story, this series, is finished. Um, one of those things again where he's talking about a lot more than you're really reading on the page and given that he's able to talk about politics, race, gender, art, I mean everything that we deal with in our day-to-day -day lives in this series I, stands as both one of my favorite reads in terms of the art, of how cool the story is and how cool the characters are and at the same time as a phenomenal commentary discussion, just uh, literature, uh, art um, that reflects back on us and our society. So, worth checking out. Again, Wildstorm, I'd say 16, 18 plus, um, you know, mature readers again. So, I'm going to take a quick break, and I'm going to be back to talk about Brian K. Vaughn's work with Marvel and DC, uh, and characters like Batman. So, I'll see you on a few.
but 